I thought we'd start today with a little demonstration. So if everyone can ask one of their neighbors for their phone, grab one of your neighbor's phones, grab your phone as well, and put two of the phones together in your palm and get a feel for how much those two phones weigh together. When you've done that, give both phones to your, to your neighbor so that they can get the same sense. Now, collectively, the weight of both of those phones weighs, about, weighs roughly the same as some of the patients I operate on. A uh, privilege and a responsibility that came after 17 years of education and training. But as an academic pediatric surgeon, I also had the privilege in engaging in some non-clinical work, not doing surgeries. And I've used that opportunity to be involved in various healthcare-related projects in Armenia. These range from coming here to do some surgeries, to giving some lectures, to mentoring some students and residents through some research projects. But despite all of the support that I had from my colleagues and my family to do this work, I felt an ever increasing sense of a weight on my shoulders when I was doing it. The more I got comfortable with operating on children a hundred times smaller than me, the more I felt the weight of something a hundred times bigger than me on my shoulder. So of course you're wondering what's, uh, what all that weight is about. Well, on the list of things a hundred times bigger than me is the giant uh, African elephant. And the weight on the shoulder was the weight of an elephant in the room. In this popular American saying, the elephant in the room is the presence of something really big, but is not being seen, it's not being mentioned, people aren't recognizing its existence. People are sitting around in the room with their heads down, doing a lot of work, wondering where the problem is, when in fact all they need to do is look up and the problem would be staring them right in their face. So there was an elephant in my room. I was sitting in a room doing the trips to Armenia, doing the research, giving the lectures, but I wasn't looking up to see the elephant. If I did, and when I did, that elephant was there to tell me something. It was there to tell me that nation building in general and health, health system strengthening in my case is really, really hard to do from afar. Yes, we can send supplies. Yes, we can give lectures. Yes, we can come and practice medicine. But that will allow us to do little more than put band-aids on a broken system. If we want to be involved in transformative change and the building of a sustainable and robust system, we really need to be doing something that we in the diaspora are oftentimes not comfortable in doing. So our move, my, our move to Armenia was my opportunity to conf confront the elephant in my room and to be a part of the team that has the opportunity to make some meaningful and impactful changes to our healthcare system. So uh, what are those meaningful and impactful changes and how do we get there? Here too, the first step is to look up and, and see the elephant, or in this case, the elephants in the room. I think it's fair to say that if we look back 30 years after independence, we should recognize that Armenia could have had a much more effective and better healthcare system than it does. On its side, the diaspora could have been a much more effective contributor to the development of that healthcare system. Neither of those happened because we were doing things but we were doing things with our heads down, not looking up and not recognizing the elephants in the room. So specifically, what are the elephants in the healthcare room? Well, the biggest one by far is quality. If there was one study that I wish everybody knew about, it's this one from 2018 in the journal Lancet. It demonstrated that of all the preventable deaths in Armenia, most of them happen because people actually get the care they need, but the care is of not good quality, rather than not having access to care. If we all just take a second to think about this and recognize that the solution to building better healthcare system in Armenia lies not in providing more care, rather than in providing better care, we would have no, um, we would have no choice but to believe that the full or, to, or to accept that the philosophy in Armenia and the diaspora needs to drastically change. In fact, uh, this overemphasis on more, more hospitals, more doctors, more high-tech equipment can 
and in our case does have a negative impact on our ability to deliver better quality care to people in Armenia. Studies have time and time again shown that the facilities or the level of equipment within facilities has very little to do with the outcomes that we get from those facilities. In fact, we as Armenians should know this better than anyone else because the founder of Healthcare Quality had long ago described that out good healthcare outcomes depend on the triad of structure, things, and people, but not only. You must also have good processes and good outcomes. Structure alone will get us nowhere. But in fact, structure has been and remains the thing that we continue to be focused on. Rather than developing or investing in the development of quality assurance, quality improvements, monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, we've spent a lot of our energy in maintaining and building hospitals at a mind-boggling rate. We've, we've also done the same with regards to producing and keeping doctors with an over-concentration of physicians, particularly in the larger cities. So what happens when you have such an overabundance of hardware in a system? Well, not surprisingly, we end up with some pretty disappointing results. When you have all of this hardware, you have to use it and you have to maintain it, and that costs a lot of money. Combined with a grossly underfinanced healthcare system, Armenia now has the highest out-of-pocket spending in the world, with 84% of healthcare dollars coming from the pocket of patients or their families. And with most of the, that spending going towards the very expensive, high-tech tertiary care, we have very, very little resources left to develop and maintain a primary care system that could prevent diseases, that could keep patients healthy, and that could manage chronic conditions well. And with that perfect storm, it's no surprise that we end up with statistics like this, with high mortality rates from conditions that could be prevented if caught early, and the one in five chance that each Armenian will die prematurely in this country. And if we think this is only about health, it's not. A couple of years ago, I was asked to give a talk in Los Angeles, and one of my friends from the tech sector was presenting right before me. His last slide is the one here on the left, where, where it was proudly demonstrated that the IT sector now contributes roughly 7% to Armenia's economy. Well, ironically, my first slide was the one on the right that showed that roughly the same, same amount was being sucked right out of the economy because of conditions that could be uh, largely uh, uh, prevented or treated early, but that we are neglecting. All of the accomplishments that we have in IT and in this sector of the economy literally being wiped away from Armenia because of expenditure that doesn't need to be. Okay, so we've looked up and we see the elephant. What next? How do we get the elephants out of the room? Well, we can try the good old fashioned calling all of our friends and trying to push the elephant out of the room. But I'm here to tell you that that's likely not going to work. Alternatively, we can let the bees loose on these, on these elephants. Yep, bees. Believe it or not, these seven ton creatures are actually afraid of tiny little bees. So much so that farmers have successfully used them to keep them out of their lands rather than shooting them uh, like they used to. And we have a lot to learn from bees who work 12 hours a day every day of their life only to produce a spoonful of honey. Yet their importance goes beyond that because they also pollinate a third of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables that we all consume in the world today. So what are the bees doing right? Well, for one, they have a well-defined purpose in their lives, to build and protect their colony, to collect fuel, and to, and to lay new eggs. What is our purpose? in healthcare? Is it to maintain the status quo and to keep the hospitals and build more hospitals, pay some of our medical bills and acquire new technology? Or are we here to do something more to help us leapfrog and catch up in healthcare or maybe even excel in healthcare? What if we all agreed that collectively we can achieve affordable, equal, and high quality healthcare for our entire population? You're probably thinking, obviously, we all want this, we, we would all achieve this. But if you think about it, so much of what we do in healthcare in Armenia right now actually distracts us from achieving this goal or contributes very little to it. 
The key here is to remain focused with surgical precision, if you will, and not, be, uh, not allow ourselves to get distracted. So step one, let's develop a vision, let's let everybody know about it, and let's stay focused on it. Step two, we got to get everyone to understand the importance of this work. Much like the importance of bees goes far beyond the honey and the wax they make, healthcare, uh, uh, keeping our uh, uh, healthcare or improving the healthcare system is much more than making people live longer or better. Yes, we all want healthier population, but this is more. This, uh, our economies, our national security, and our futures hinge on us having a healthy population. Step three, get organized. Bees have an incredibly sophisticated system of a division of labor, roles and responsibilities, and well-defined tasks with very, very strict timelines. They are, in short, a, 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 an organization with a well-defined vision, mission, uh, mission, and roadmap. What is our roadmap? What is going to keep us in our, uh, in our road so that we can achieve what we want? I'm not sure that we have yet asked ourselves that question or have answers to those questions. You see, our problem is no longer one of adequate resources. We have most of what we need. And when we don't, the diaspora is our icing on the cake. What we need to focus on are the systems and the processes of good governance, leadership, prioritization, coordination, and collaboration. If we want better medical education, we should build a better medical education system, not just give a lot more lectures. If we want our patients with cancer, <laughs> if we want better outcomes for our patients with cancer, we should develop a system that knows how to do that, not just do more cancer surgeries. There is now ample evidence from all over the world that investing in system strengthening and developing more robust healthcare, national healthcare systems give us, gives us far more return on our investments than providing medical care or acquiring new technologies. Armenia now has a lot of very uh, smart and enthusiastic people who recognize these. A few of these are my now colleagues in the room. I uh, encourage all of us to support their work and to encourage them to do more and also look at healthcare strengthening through their lens. All of us should be thinking more about how we can make the system better rather than continuing to put band-aids on the system. So really the question is not so much about whether we, we are strong enough or not to push the elephant out of the room. Uh, because that really doesn't matter. We may or we may not. It's not important. Uh, because what we do have are a lot of bees. And we know what bees are capable of doing to animal elephants that are 30,000 times stronger than them or bigger than them. The moral of my story is that size doesn't matter. Lucky for me. Organization, planning, and the right tools do. These hands can operate on patients that are 100 times smaller than me because they have been equipped with the right tools and they are the, pro uh, the product of a system, a medical and, ed and educational system uh, that are highly sophisticated and well-developed. These are the structure, but they are nothing without the systems that got them to do what they can do now. It is now up to us to first and foremost develop those systems that can turn our collective hands into the builders of an efficient and effective healthcare system to keep our people happy, healthy, and prosperous. Thank you. Woo!